This video is sponsored by Banggood.com. Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop. And this is my 2021 holiday gift guide for filament and resin 3D printers. So the plan today is to go over some of the printers that I have reviewed and talk about some of their best qualities and the reasons why you might want to buy one for yourself or for a loved one. So I'm limiting this holiday gift guide to printers that I myself has, have actually used and put my hands on. So I speak from experience when I'm talking about the specific features of these printers. And after I share with you my thoughts about these particular printers, I will also share with you my wish list and what I plan on buying in the future. If you'd like to learn more about any of these printers featured in this video, or if you're interested in buying one of your own, I will provide an affiliate link for each printer down in the description below. Banggood.com offers various holiday sales as well throughout the holiday season. I will be sure to link those as well in the description below. Now let's get started. As you can see, I'm starting off with the FDM printers and what I would call the best budget printer out there. I don't think you get a better bang for your buck than you do with the Ender 3 Pro. It comes with everything you need to get started printing. It is a very reliable machine. And if you are a beginner, it is a good way to jump into 3D printing as you will have to assemble this machine and you learn a lot about it as you're assembling it. This particular printer has been an absolute workhorse in my shop. Personally, I didn't think I would like a Bowden extruder printer, uh, but as I have shown in my review video, I have been able to print TPU flawlessly with this printer and it has handled anything I've thrown at it. And as a matter of fact, this is my go-to printer when I print PETG. One upgrade that I have done to this printer is I have taken away this magnetic ultra base type bed and I've added one of these glass plates. And all the glass plate does is helps flatten the bed and makes leveling it a little bit easier. So this is the most budget friendly printer. Now on to the most beginner friendly printer. This is the Focus Odin 3 F5 and it is kind of like an Ender 3 V2 clone but it comes with one feature that makes it unique and special. The most unique thing about this printer is that it assembles in about five minutes. The whole printer comes folded up and all you have to do is lift up this gantry and put in four screws and you're ready to go. And that is why I call this printer the most beginner friendly printer because if you're not interested in building your own printer from a bunch of parts, this would be the printer for you. Now this is not what I would call a, a beginner level printer. It comes with many upgraded parts and that includes silent stepper motors, a 32-bit board, it is direct drive and it has an integrated filament uh, runout detection and it has dual Z screws on it. It is a very very nice and very precise printer and it's priced very competitively as well. I really like this printer and it would probably be my favorite printer if it had a little bit larger print bed. Uh, so I do find the print bed size a little bit limiting on this one. It's the same size as the Ender 3 Pro that's over there. When I print, I usually print large functional parts. Um, and so sometimes I do run into size constraints with this. But if you're looking to get into 3D printing, and like I said, you don't want to build your printer from a big pile of parts, this is definitely the printer for you. So now we'll look at what I would call my most reliable FDM printer. So this beast here is the Soval SV01. And I would have to say that this is my most reliable printer. This was the first printer that I bought. And I learned a lot on this printer. And I have made some small modifications. I added cable chain, which I felt was necessary because the cable was dragging all over the place. And I changed the nozzle cooling vent. And I guess the biggest change I did was I added a BL touch, but that's absolutely optional. This bed is so flat that um, you can get away with just doing normal manual bed leveling. But as I was learning, I wanted to try out a BL touch, and so I put it on this machine. 
I call this my most reliable machine because that's what it is. I can design just about anything in Fusion 360 and then slice it for this printer and I, as long as that first layer goes down okay, I know that this printer will not fail. The print bed on this is a lot larger than the previous two printers that I showed you. It's a 240 by 280 bed, and so it's just a little bit larger, but it's big enough that I could actually fit a full-size, let's say, a Mandalorian helmet on this printer if I wanted to. Maybe one of the drawbacks with this printer is that it's still running on an 8-bit board, but really, for the purposes of what I use it for, I've never really had an issue with an 8-bit versus a 32-bit board. I can do lithopanes, I can do very complex prints with this printer, and everything comes out great. I think the biggest selling point for this printer is that it is direct drive, which I do like, and that it has dual Z lead screws, which help bear the weight of the direct drive extruder. And of course, that large print area is also nice. So that wraps up my quick recap of my three FDM printers. Now let's talk a little bit about what I have on my wish list for an FDM 3D printer. The more I print and the larger items that I print, I'm looking for speed. And when your Y axis has to move a big heavy glass plate back and forth and back and forth, you start to lose some fidelity the faster you go. So the solution to that is a Core XY machine like the Ender 5 or there's a company called Tron XY or Tronxy that's out there that makes primarily makes Core XY machines. So on my wish list right now is one of these Core XY machines and I'd love to just get my hands on one and try it out and see how far I can push it. I don't have a specific machine in mind yet but if I get my hands on one you will be the first ones to find out about it. Okay, so now let's move on to the SLA or the resin printers and let's talk about them for a little bit. So this is the Anycubic Photon Mono and I would call this definitely by far the most popular printer that I own. I can't call it the best printer that I own, I can't call it the cheapest printer that I own, and I can't call it the most user-friendly printer that I own. However, what it does have going for it is it has a huge user base and a huge support base on Facebook. So if you are looking to get into printing and you want a printer that a lot of people have and a lot of people can help you with, the Anycubic Photon Mono is a good printer. My biggest complaints about this printer are the build quality. It's, it's mostly plastic. And I've mentioned it in my review uh, that it uses a proprietary FEP type screen on the bottom and if you need to replace that FEP you have to buy their proprietary FEP in order to replace it. You can't replace it with just any old FEP. And so that kind of locks you into their ecosystem and uh, it can be kind of a bummer especially when they're out of stock of their own product on their website. An easy solution to that problem is to buy replacement resin vats that are made by companies like Soval and I will provide a link down in the description below to one of those and that solves the issue with the FEP. But as I advise most people that reach out to me on what I think would be the best printer for beginners is that there are better options than the Anycubic Photon Mono for a cheaper price and I'm going to share one of those with you right now. This is the Voxelab Proxima 6.0 and I would have to say that this is probably the best printer for anybody who is thinking about getting into resin printing and but they're not sure. First of all the build quality is outstanding it is all metal construction and that includes the resin vat. It uses a ball joint style leveling system on the build plate which makes for leveling the build plate very easy and you pretty much just have to remove it from the packaging, level your build plate, put in your resin, and you can just start printing right away without any issue. Oh, and the best part about it is it is the least expensive out of all of these printers that I'm going over today. So you get a great printer with amazing build quality for a really great price. Now the only real downside to this printer when compared to the other ones is that the stepper motors that run this printer are just a little on the loud side, and I don't know why they just are 
And so if quiet operation is important to you, maybe this printer isn't the right one for you. So next we're going to talk about what I think is the absolute best printer that I have in this category. This is the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro, and out of all the 6-inch printers I own, this one has to be the nicest. The build quality is superb, the leveling system is great, the resin vat is all metal, it is super silent and is very easy to operate, and everything about this printer just says quality. Now I realize that it may not be fair to compare the Pro model of the Elegoo Mars to the base model of the Anticubic Photon, but these are the printers that I have, and I don't really want to speak to the quality of a printer that I have not used myself. I'm sure the Anticubic Photon Mono SE is a much higher quality printer than the regular Photon Mono, um, but I don't know how well that compares to this. In my experience, this printer is great, it's quiet, and I've never had a failed print with this printer, which is a big thing, especially with the amount of effort it takes to post-process your prints and deal with messes that are made. So if you're in the market for a 6-inch resin 3D printer and you're wanting something a little bit nicer than the entry level, the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro is definitely a good choice. And if 6 inches is too small of a build volume for you, they do make the Elegoo Saturn, which has the exact same build quality and all of the features of the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro built into a much larger package. I believe this screen on this one, the build area is about 9 inches as opposed to 6 inches on the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. So this is definitely an option out there for you as well. As far as my wish list for resin printers is concerned, I would like to get my hands on these new mini 4K 3D printers. They are the 6 inch size screen, but they have a 4K resolution instead of the 2K resolution that these printers all have. I just would like to get my hands on one to do some comparisons to see if it makes that noticeable of a difference in resolution and uh, see what type of quality I can get out of them. Uh, right now there is the um, Elegoo Mars 3, which does 4K. There's the Frozen Sonic 4K, which has been out for a long time. Um, and I'm sure there's some others. I know Anycubic has one that's coming out soon, but it's not out yet. And I'd love to get my hands on one and check it out. Thanks for watching this holiday gift guide for uh, FDM and SLA 3D printing. 3D printing is a very fun hobby and it can be very rewarding. The possibilities with 3D printing are endless and you're really only limited by your imagination. Like I said before, the links to all of these printers will be down in the description below if you'd like to learn more about them or if you'd like to buy one for yourself. I am a Banggood affiliate so I do receive a commission for any purchases that are made through those affiliate links. But the best part is, that all comes at no extra cost to you. So as always, if you like this content, please drop me a like and go ahead and subscribe to be notified for any future updates that come out. Once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.